A couple days ago I posted a video that gave testimony from officers and other citizens of a small town in Washington state where in 1994 they were dumped on by a mysterious form of gelatinous rain for a solid three to four weeks. Now, this gelatinous rain seemed to cause the whole town to come down with flu-like symptoms. They all got sick. So naturally they suspected something was fishy and took samples of this gelatinous rain Took it to a took it to a laboratory, and lo and behold, the results came back that it was just teeming with many different forms of bacteria. So it became apparent to me that this was actually a test by the U.S. military on this small town of less than a thousand people in a remote area to see how well this new dispersion method of biologicals worked. Now it wasn't until today that a member of the above top secret dot com message boards um, was kind enough to refer me to a U.S. patent that seems to explain how this process can occur how they can create this gelatinous rain and the patent itself only refers to using this method to modify weather but um, it doesn't take a large stretch of the imagination to see how this can be applied to cultivating bacterial bacteria in the clouds or even keeping a virus alive in the clouds because as we all know even though a virus isn't technically alive it won't stay active very long in a normal aerosol environment especially at higher altitudes so anyway let's get into the patent here and uh, one thing to take note of is the inventor Peter Cardani and his company uh, Geltech Solutions I don't think they had anything to do with the military testing of this and I'll give some analysis of that in a minute but the main reason is that this patent was granted 2001, a good seven years after the military testing had already taken place. And I'll give some other analysis on why I don't think he did it in a minute. But anyway, let's get into this patent here and see how this process works. The instant application discloses the method of modifying weather by seeding storm clouds with a polymer. The storm clouds are seeded by dispersion but that it, by dispersing a superabsorbent polymer into the cloud in sufficient quantities to cause a large absorption of water. The reaction of the water with the polymer creates a gel-like substance that precipitates to the surface, thus causing an internal constriction in the cloud to lessen storm velocities. A superabsorbent polymer is a resin capable of absorbing water up to several thousand times its own weight. And then he gets into the specifics on how this polymer is created. I won't get into the details. He says, um, a polymer can be produced that is of uniform small size, has a high gel capacity, is highly water insoluble, uh, insoluble but highly water swellable, i.e., a superabsorbent polymer. Superabsorbent polymers can be dehydrated to a powder. When the powder is added to an aqueous solution and agitated, the polymer is able to absorb many times its own weight of the water molecules and a gel-like substance is formed. Superabsorbent polymers are particularly suited for uses where rapid absorption of aqueous fluid is desired or for uses where the swelling properties in water are employed. Now, as he says here, the superabsorbent polymers can be dehydrated and made into a powder. If you take that powder and put it into an aqueous solution right before you spray it out into the atmosphere, as soon as it gets in the atmosphere, it's going to start absorbing the water vapor molecules from, from the air. And so essentially what he doesn't say is that if you put bacteria into that aqueous solution right before you spray it out, it could link up with the superabsorbent polymers because they're superabsorbent. So therefore, around it, it's going to just start forming wa water molecules and encapsulate that um, biological or even a virus. If you put a virus in there, it's going to be encapsulated by many thousands of times the polymer's weight in water molecules, and that will protect it. And as a result, it forms a gelatinous uh, texture. But I would think with at least 15 years of testing the military might have come up with a way so that it wouldn't be it wouldn't appear quite so gelatinous but it would still have the same effect so essentially they could use this method to put bacteria and have the whole cloud actually living and growing and cultivating you know the bacteria is just going to die if it's up in the atmosphere and even though a virus isn't technically alive it's not going to it's not going to be active um, very long up in a normal aerosol because 
of how the sun affects it. But anyway, that's my theory on how this can be used. And also, we all know that cloud seeding has been around for many years. Even in China, just recently, I believe they used uh, cloud seeding. And they, I mean, it's documented. You can look it up in any newspaper you want. Uh, just a couple of days ago, they they used cloud seeding to dump 160,000 tons of snow over the cities just because they're having a drought. So, um, if you use the cloud seeding uh, in conjunction with this, with these super absorbent polymers, you could cultivate the cr the clouds to um, hold either a virus or a bacteria and keep it alive, and then use cloud seeding to make it rain down wherever you wanted over whatever city you wanted. So they have complete control over the clouds, what they can do, and when they can rain down. Anyway, uh, now I'll give my analysis on why I don't think that Peter Cardani had any, or his company had anything to do with it. If you click on Peter Cardani here, it comes up with an address, uh, North Killian Drive. So I looked, when I searched for North Killian Drive, it actually came up with, I came up with a list of auto repair shops in uh, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And this is a list of every single auto repair shop in Palm Beach, Florida. And oddly enough, a whole bunch of them on this Killian Drive. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. So, then as I look at the map of North Killian Drive, it's just an industrial loop. And so there's not a whole ton of businesses here, but vast majority of them are auto repair shops. Nothing, you know, it's not like a big military complex or a high budget. They weren't a high budget company at the time. Uh, since then, they've actually grown their size and um, they moved to a new location. So, and, it, and that leads me to believe that they're just a normal startup company that has increased their profits and grown. And then I look at the board of directors on their website, geltechsolutions.ir.stockpr.com. Um, the board of directors have all been hired in the last few years, and none of them really were flagged with military connections. And also, Geltech Solutions has a MySpace page and even a YouTube account where they've uploaded demonstrations of some of their new products. So you can go look at that for yourself. But anyway, that's my theory on how the military can use uh, super absorbent polymers to make clouds that can either harbor bacteria or viruses, keep it alive. Then they can use cloud sending to raid down on anybody they want, whenever they want.